welcome back to the Vestibule of Heck podcast. This is episode two. Uh, we made it. Uh, we got to episode two. <laughs> We're here. We did, we did it. Uh, we are already more consistent than 90% of the podcasts I've ever watched. We didn't get canceled on our own network. <laughs> you can't on our own. Could you imagine if like, I guys get? I would imagine I get a text from you one day, be like, "Hey, uh, we're canceling the podcast. We're done. It's a, it's a, it's a money issue. You know, it's a funding thing. You know, we're getting big cuts right now. And we so, already, we already spent our, uh, our weekly budget on, on the, on the website domain. So, oh, I'm uh, sorry, that's a, that's a yearly budget. Uh, that that's right. Spent? Sorry, twenty dollars yearly budget. Oh man, I'm right, way luckily, over. I have to send you some expense reports, buddy. <laughs> ah, Christ. I mean, luckily we're at the end of this. Uh, we're getting towards the end of the fourth quarter, fourth fiscal quarter. So, I mean, next year we'll have 20 new dollars. And by that, I mean, we'll be $100 in debt. So, uh, yeah, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Brendan. Yeah, I'm Mitchell. And, uh, you know, like I said, the Vestibule Heck Podcast, episode two. Uh, it's been kind of a crazy week. Uh, so, Mitchell, what have you been up to this week? Uh, you know, stressing out over work and uh, trying to meet mm-hmm. my, uh, my shithead editor's deadlines. <laughs> for uh a little bit of context i'm his shithead header <laughs> you asshole you absolute asshole all right uh i've been i'm crab sitting right now uh having a real good time watching uh my friend's crab his name is lenny you know that kind of it just strikes me now but that kind of sounds like a euphemism for something maybe like trying not to poop <laughs> uh, crab sitting yeah i don't know something Crabs. Oh, well, maybe that's like, you know, like you're at like a concert and you go to sit down on one of the chairs, but somebody spilled their beer on it. So you kind of like sit on the front, so your legs are kind of. There you go. Like, There's crab sitting. Vertical to the ground. That's a crab sitting. <laughs> Look it up on Urban Dictionary. I gotta, I gotta go there quick. I gotta go take that page before anyone else takes it from us. Oh man, this is. There's a lot of stuff has happened this week. Uh, you wanna, you wanna start with some, uh, some football. Some football. Yeah, I love football. Some football. I, I've been. I mean, I'm a, I'm a Broncos fan. So I've been having a pretty alright season. Uh, uh, isn't going well. isn't Trevor Simeon hurt now? I, I said I was having a good season. Well, I mean, um, you had no way of yeah. knowing he was even going to be good. Yeah. So who who knows? You also have another rookie, uh, mm-hmm. Paxton Lynch. Oh well, no, yeah. Trevor Simeon's not a rookie, but never played I mean, before. Yeah, he's basically a rookie, essentially, right? Um, this is real first breakout season, so that's been going cool. Uh, but uh, in hurt. in more in more fun news, let's talk about uh, somebody who's good at football. Oh man, are we gonna talk about Colin Kaepernick again? <laughs> no, I said somebody who's good at all football. Right, you said, oh yeah, you said good. All right, so who who's on the who's on the chopping block this week? Uh, let's talk about Odell Beckham. Odell Beckham, he's he's a giant, right? He's a giant? yeah, a giant in more ways than one. <laughs> like a giant bitch. Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean honestly, uh, do you wanna do you wanna kind of describe what's been happening with Mr. Beckham this week? All right, so. The, the gist of it is that he had a real bad game this week. I think it was like three <laughs> catches for 24 yards. And uh, he came out after the game and said he wasn't having fun anymore and that he feels like he's a target for uh, opposing players and, and refs. And I kind of get where he's coming from. Yeah, I think one of the big things that stood out to me, I was, I was watching, I read an article on it, um, I think right from ESPN, and I watched some of the footage, and there was one part, I, I, he missed a pass, right, and he was going out of bounds, and probably about four to five yards into the sidelines, he gets railed, he gets totally just like smashed by an, an opposing player, and it was very clearly intentional, um, but at the same time, I mean, that's kind of how that sport goes, Yeah, it's kind of like that. This whole scenario, though, goes back to uh, last year with his run-in with Josh Norman when he was on the Panthers. And Josh Norman not, really got really in his head. That, yeah. uh, Josh Norman really got in his head, and he played mind games with him and made him get a bunch of unnecessary penalties and so mm-hmm. on and so forth. And uh, and now that's kind of become the model for every player. Just try to bother him and make him off, <laughs> you know, put him off his game. Right, because it clearly gets to him. I mean, he was very after that game. Uh, you know, watching the interviews, he was very clearly bothered. Yeah. Um, so, so my thinking on this is is, is kind of twofold, though. Initially, I thought like, wow, you know, suck it up, man up, whatever. Because initially, the the only story that I read was Odell Beckham catches three balls for twenty four yards, gets an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, like taunting mm-hmm. was specifically what it was. And to me, you know, logically, those things don't go together. 23 yards and taunting? 
Like, what, yeah, are, like, what are you talking what, about? What, is he like showboating? Like, look at me. I got more than 20 yards. Like, no, no one would be, no one would be happy with that. But then later on in the week, when I started to hear stuff about like how he was saying, I'm not having fun anymore. And now it's coming out that his quarterback, uh, Eli Manning and his coach, uh, Ben McAdoo are starting to rip him publicly and call him a distraction and tell him he needs to get his act together. I'm kind of yeah. starting to see where he's coming from because he's starting to feel like a victim in his own locker room, the one place in football where you're supposed to feel supported. Right, and I, I read something about Eli Manning, and I don't know the exact quote, but it was very much like, hey, man up, like get over it. And which is, you know, there's a time and a place for that, I suppose, but not this. I think I think he's full within his right to kind of be hey, like, hey, I'm kind of getting picked on right now. That sucks. You know, it, it's very genuine, I feel. Um, you know, I, I called him a giant bitch earlier. And it was, they're definitely more of a joke because I'm very much on the side of Beckham on this. Um, you know, he, he he's doing something that he loves, and I can only imagine what it would feel like to do a thing that you want to do for forever, you get to do it, and then you get fucking bullied by grown-ass men. Well, and then going back to my, my article a couple weeks ago about, you know, having fun in sports and how that should mm-hmm. be more encouraged... At the, in the same vein, we shouldn't be dismissing emotion and feeling because that's what leads to the fun. That's what gives us all these talking points and all this soap opera type drama, which is what we really love about sports is that it's the best unwritten reality show you can get. Right. It, it, it's, it's real people, real humans. And, you know, I think people forget that also. You know, they see sports figures and we've kind of made gods of sports figures in, in especially in American culture. Uh, if you look at other country, cultures, if you look like Brazil and their uh, soccer teams, football teams, you know, they I mean, they're revered. They're absolutely revered. They're put on a pedestal. And we forget that they're people who are just as prone to mistakes as we are. You know, and that's unfortunate. You don't ever want to, you never want to see someone like that. Yeah. And I mean, it's, uh, I could see how this conversation would get redundant because it's really the same conversation we had about Kaepernick last week mm-hmm. about how he feels persecuted for you know voicing his opinion and how people are ripping him for being a person and using a person's rights as an american so and it's just gonna there's this storyline's just gonna be here every single week every, anytime anything new happens you'll have this storyline of x person did this and showed their humanity and this is why they're a bad person for it oh absolutely and and i mean you know me i'm kind of a I'm a little bit of a conspiracy theorist. I, 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 I like uh, I like different kinds of conspiracies. And I think it's kind of a big misdirection. Because the NFL does some really shady shit. Oh, um, so you're talking about the, the oh, breast cancer thing now. Oh, golly, am I. Um, be, okay, so for anyone who's, who's not aware, um, every, what is it? It's this month, right? It's well, next month. It's, November? No, it's, it's, I believe it's October. Um, and October? October, it's not just the NFL. October is National Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Right, so right. the NFL does, they have their athletes wearing only pink accessories and they sell things on their websites that are, you know, their team logos, but they also incorporate, you know, the color pink and the breast cancer awareness, like the ribbon. And they, you know, send some of the proceeds to uh, breast cancer research. Mm-hmm. But well, to your point... <laughs> When you say some of the proceeds, um, so I, I was I was just on businessinsider.com. We were talking about this before the for the the cast we started recording, and we were looking at this pie chart, this pie chart that that that's on the Business Insider website, and the way they've parsed it out, the NFL, uh, they do a big like push for like the pink uniforms, and they do like the breast cancer awareness, they do the ribbons, they do like all that all that kind of marketing stuff. Apparently, according to Business Insider, only uh, 8.01% of the money spent on the pink NFL merchandise is actually going towards cancer research. Um, and, they show the, and they show this pie chart. And I'll, I'll put the pie chart in the description. Um, <laughs> if you look at this, uh, the NFL, it looks, it looks all right. Yeah, the, 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 yeah, the, pie, the really pie chart kinda... really makes it look a lot more innocuous than it really is. Yeah, I, so this yeah exactly this pie chart. So it shows NFL gets directly one point two five percent, right? So if you're looking at a hundred dollars, it's a buck twenty five every hundred dollars sold, which is not very much. Um, and then you look at the 
Uh, there's a certain amount that has to go to the administration of the American Cancer Society because that's a business. They have to run it. They have back end. They have overhead. They have a bunch of stuff. And then you see the American Cancer Society research is 8.01. And you look at the retail and manufacturer, right? The manufacturer is getting 37.5% and the retailer is getting 50%. The thing that it doesn't really mention, they mention it in, in the article itself, but not this pie chart doesn't do it justice because you know you have to analyze well and also the, the numbers within where well also where it gets real shady is that the NFL doesn't mention this right so most of the time when it comes to an NFL retailer or manufacturer the NFL keeps those rights or the individual team keeps those rights right so you're looking at ninety two percent of this money stays within the NFL of the <laughs> of this of this breast cancer it's unreal awareness merchandise money it's ridiculous it's crazy it's just the rich get richer. Right, and, like, listen, the NFL clearly, it's one of the most profitable sports in America. You know, I think, is it beaten out by basketball? Uh, no, I actually think football is, is the, the most, most profitable in America. I would believe it. Looking at their numbers is crazy. I mean, they make crazy revenue, right? Uh, mostly because they're so exclusive, like, you know, getting their rights. Like, you know, every time they show a game, like, you know, this NFL telecast is brought to you by the blah, 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 blah NFL, you know, only you have to have a license to, you know, you have to be approved to show an nfl game yeah i mean even it's uh, illegal. even those even those pictures i used in the the sports article uh, wouldn't have been legal if we were trying to make a dime on it exactly right and and that's something i want to stress we're not making money uh nobody take us down and so <laughs> <laughs> we can't be taken down we have nothing behind us we're just doing it for fun um and it, yeah and it's it's the most profitable sport so like as a businessman right you have to look at this and be like okay this is brilliant right it is horrendously in my opinion horrendously unethical um yeah there's a there's a difference between smart and and correct Mm -hmm. like oh i don't want to every i feel like we have to because the election is coming up so soon uh, when they're talking about uh donald trump and his potential tax avoiding though he's using tax laws right so it's shady but it's legal yeah, and it, it kind of comes down. Concept, it, yeah, it comes yeah. down to the spirit of the law versus the letter of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's a really important distinction that a lot of people don't really understand. Well, and I also I also saw something um, to that point to you know move on from sports onto something that you know just make everybody hate their life a little bit more. Mm-hmm, um, of course, the whole thing with uh, I saw you know I did one of these Facebook pictures. It's you know just stupid nonsense, but it it, it made sense to me. Yeah. It said something along the lines of, if you are touting Donald Trump for using this method to avoid paying taxes, I don't want to hear you talk about people uh, gaming the welfare system anymore. Right, because it's the same concept. Yeah, it's it's abiding by the letter of the law instead of the spirit of the law in both cases. Right, and I think that's where, you know, I mean, there are a lot of laws that need to be fixed, they need to be updated. Um, especially when you're looking at like digital era stuff, anything that was pre-internet, it's crazy. Like the law, it doesn't always perfectly apply anymore. And so you'll get these loopholes and, you know, I, I don't like that people are abusing welfare. Um, I think it's a system that we desperately need for people who desperately need it. And it's unfortunate that people are doing it. However, if that's how the system is, everyone has, everyone has worked through a rigged system once or twice in their life. Well, yes, you know, but it, um, I think at the I think at this juncture, um, it comes down to it's often the same people saying, "Wow, look how smart Donald Trump is for mm-hmm. gaming the system. Let's let him run our country." Are the same people that are saying, "Wow, look how despicable these people are for gaming the system. They shouldn't be in our country." Right, because there's I mean there's obviously a very negative view of the poor, um, lower class people have always gotten the most shit. Um, and, you know, and, and maybe uh, there, there's, I mean, obviously there's a reason because we're afraid of people who aren't like us, right? Um, so rich people are scared of normal people, normal people are scared of rich people and poor people and poor people are scared of everyone um, else, as we all are, you know? And so, you know, what what do you do, right? Like, is there an answer? I mean, I don't think there is, but... I mean, there is somewhere. It's not apparent. It's it's going to be oh, more I mean, yeah, the like, result I mean, I, of... I don't have an answer. Well, yeah, it, it's, it's something that would be more the result of tens of hundreds of years of political discourse and progressive action it, it wouldn't be one thing that's like all right pass this bill and everything's better right yeah it just 
it astounds me with that with that absolute like the the hypocrisy like the stark hypocrisy of some people it's unfortunate that we have to look at the news and just see that everyone's a fucking idiot like the (laughs) majority i'm just like i'm like oh my god like did i told you about the woman in west virginia right yes oh my god ladies and gentlemen let me introduce you to the absolutely the, the most idiotic thing i've ever read so let me let um, me let me preface this real quick uh yeah. you know how you always hear like the joke of you know the the vanity license plate that says like drugs in car <laughs> right that's right. on a similar level yeah so uh, in in uh, fayette county in west virginia um a woman got arrested uh, two women got arrested but one woman specifically got arrested um because she put a warning sign on her front door now it's kind of innocuous right like hey like get away from my house you know, like, beware of dogs. Well, you, yeah, you'd not... also think, like, no solicitors. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right, like, like reasonable, like, you know, get off my lawn, keep off the grass kind of shit. Um, this is this is what the letter, the sorry, the sign said, um, and I quote, uh, Due to snitches, everyone entering my home is subjected to being searched. All cell phones and drinks will be left outside. If you're not a snitch, it won't offend you if I search you. So, I mean, you know, the, the language, snitches uh you know that's obviously criminal element uh you know stitches get stitches that the classic trope (laughs) (laughs) this woman what was her name april lavender which i didn't know that she was a yankee candle (laughs) Um, april lavender (laughs) of oak hill was charged with possession of a controlled substance with the intent to deliver right so she was some kind of in between she wasn't making the drugs uh they found heroin and meth in her house and other substances that were unidentified um, when this came out, which was today, uh, at 5.20. I saw this, like, in my news feed on Facebook. I'm like, oh, my lord. And I fact-checked it. I'm like, oh, my god, it's real. Like, this is real. Um, apparently the, uh, the, 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 sh- the chief of police, um, said, <laughs> and I quote, and this is one of my favorite, I wish I'd get this tattooed on me. This is the greatest quote of all time from a, he's a county deputy chief, right? And I quote, who would put up something like that other than someone doing drugs? <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, you know, you have the right to, to pretty much do whatever you want in in this country, but, like, mm-hmm. just know that there are things that are self-incriminating that maybe, maybe don't do them. <laughs> like, don't come in. No cops allowed. Drugs inside. Like, that's going to get cops Yeah, to yeah, in dr- drugs, drugs in car. It, it's pretty much just asking for trouble. <clears throat> that's like when i see those guys uh, I, uh girls wear them too but for some reason it's mostly dudes i see where well, they're wearing like the hats with like the pot leaf on it you know and like they're wearing like the shirts like the legalize it and all that crazy like you know they look like a cartoon character see as somebody like, who, look as like somebody who my doesn't parents... uh, as somebody who doesn't smoke i'd like to start wearing all that <laughs> oh my god because that would just like invite it you just but like you gotta admit like that would invite like, oh yeah invite absolutely kind of it invites scrutiny and it it comes down to there's all sorts of things that can invite scrutiny into your life mm-hmm. on a, a legal level or otherwise like it's it's like going into a job interview dressed like a scumbag and thinking you're gonna get the job like no nah. yeah, yeah like get get a get a nice shirt get a good tie you know if it's a real good place go get yourself a nice suit you know like you know, which which is actually kind of now that I'm thinking that it's kind of funny. Uh, I actually this this week uh, I was telling you about this earlier, and this is my favorite thing. I uh, li- little uh, little personal life thing. Uh, I've I've been applying in a lot of places to just do some freelance writing on the side, uh, so I can pay for my numerous habits, and uh, or I mean put it into the into the into the website is what I meant. My I numerous right? habits. Oh yeah, you're just trying to expand our twenty dollar yearly budget into thirty dollars. Well, I'm ho- whoa oh my god but calm down john d rockefeller i'm trying to expand this year to maybe 2250 maybe 23 if we're lucky all right i mean <laughs> that's, that's an if. i mean if. although that's a sustainable business what do they say you're supposed to turn a profit after three years we can do that uh yeah exactly i mean if if we get to the point where we're spending 30 dollars a year and then like our parents feel bad for us or our friends feel bad and they give us a 20 dollar bill that's like more than half of our i bet you and y- i bet you in year three we'll we'll make Twenty one dollars. <laughs> I'm kind of. I want to hard. If in three years we're selling merchandise, because I, I'd eventually like to start doing like shirts, hats, stickers, uh, flags. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, tell whatever your friends. Do, right. Exactly. You know. Um, I would like to think that in year three we're gonna make twenty one dollars and shut it down. 
<laughs> for the year. We do, oh, yep, we turned a profit. See you next year, lads. <laughs> we'll be back. And we're not going to come back with any, like, really good shit either. Like, we're going to just come back and, like, business as usual. Oh, yeah, like, it's not going to be year better. Workshop things. We're just going to take the year off. We made our money back. And that's, a, what, that's what, ten fifty between the both of us? Yeah. Hey, that's pretty good. I'll take it. Um, oh, right. So, back on, so, right, this, uh, this website, uh, which I'm going to drop, uh, writersdepartment.com. Uh, don't work for them, first of all. Uh, wow. But. Uh, Way to take the <laughs> well, high road. Uh, there's a question of legality. Uh, so, uh, not legality, but ethical. Uh, once again, another ethical versus legal thing. So I, you know, submitted my application, and uh, you know, I was too qualified. Um, th- th- here's here's what the business does, though. It's, it's an interesting thing. Um, they're like a middleman service for independent contractors, where you um, get money for writing papers for people, papers, articles, uh, homework, basically, uh, basically doing rich kids' homework for them. <laughs> And I want to uh, nine times out of ten, uh, if you go to a, if you go to any kind of uh, higher education, it's like college, right? You're, there's going to be rules of conduct, <clears throat> and those rules of conduct uh, forbid this. This is plagiarism. It is, uh, you know, if you take someone's work and put your name on it, plagiarism. Uh, and it's just an interesting little look into like questionable legality. I mean, when I say legality, I mean within the context of the schools. There's nothing illegal. Having somebody write yeah, it. you're not you're not gonna get arrested for uh, mm-hmm. plagiarizing a paper, believe it or not. Yeah, the the words police are not gonna get you unless you're on a campus. Then the words police are absolutely gonna come get you. <laughs> like, and it's just it was just a weird thing because I was I was thinking about it and I'm I'm kind of happy. You know, I'm saying this just to make it myself feel better. I'm kind of happy they didn't hire me because I don't know where that would put my integrity as a writer, uh, right? Because I love writing, uh, but a lot of those papers were like big deal things that they put on there oh yeah also wouldn't uh, that kind of uh go completely counter to what we're doing here well okay so yes and no i think it would insofar as uh i wouldn't be able to post the work as my own but at the same time it's not really what it's for um i, I like hack media having it as an outlet but i also understand that sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do um, oh yeah I don't, I don't mean that you should never make money off of your writing mm-hmm. i just i just mean that the uh the, the ethics of it and the the freedom of, of writing. It, it's kind of... Because I feel like what we're doing here is touting creativity. And uh, what writing for other people does is more shutting down creativity. Right, because you're all of a sudden working in a very strict... Uh, you're working in a box. Well, and even not just for you, but for the person and... hiring you to do mm-hmm. that. You're just shutting down their creativity because they're just taking the easy way out and paying for somebody else to be creative so it funnels creativity into a smaller group Void. of people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and absolutely. I think, yeah, it does kind of, it flies a little bit in the face of it. Um, though, I think, if anything, it's a good exercise in writing. You know, you gotta, you gotta practice. Um, so something like that, you know, I get to learn new things, I get to like experience new things, and then I could go and write something meaningful for me about it. You know, it'd be like the pre-material for the real material. See, I would have liked if you got that job, worked there for like six months, and then outed every single person that you wrote for. Oh, no, I had a plan. Right? That would have been plan beautiful. If any of it went sour, I'd be like, no, listen, I have you all by the balls. Like, you cannot, you can't stop me. Now, that would have that would have turned us a profit. Me. Yeah, that, oh, man. You, you will all lose? pay us $10 a month, or I will out you and get your master's degree revoked. Yeah, so people are putting their thesis, their master's thesis on this website. And it's like, holy crap. People were paying like for like a 65-page paper, $1,300. Like that is, I mean, that's a good amount for that amount of work, I suppose, but Jesus. Well, there are people that like, are just, cash rich and ambition poor. Yeah, it just, it blows my mind. Because I mean, you know, we, we both grew up in a similar kind of situation. We Our parents didn't have money. Like we we we've never had money. No, we've always been. I think we've always been more ambition rich than cash rich. <laughs> yeah, I feel like from a very young age we were taught to you know like pursue your interests and and you know be become something more than your paycheck. You know, become something more than your bank balance. Yeah, a job uh, a job again, is not who you are. It's what you do. Yeah, it, there's a, it's a job versus a career. It's like I would consider a job a thing I do to get money. A career is something that I would hope would you know help define who i am yeah i've never had a career 
had a, had a lot of yes, jobs. <laughs> I, I feel like it's pretty. I feel like maybe a lot of people listening. I feel like it's kind of a, a thing that's happening to our generation. Uh, careers are not really a thing anymore. Um, which I, I say that, but there's. I, I'm not just saying that as like a jaded millennial or whatever you want to call our generation. I think it's like the Twitter generation now or some bullshit. I think. We're... They keep changing it. The Instagram generation. You know, it's like I every mean, new app that that's, comes out. That's just the title. news. Oh, right, yeah. Like, nobody's actually calling us that. But, like, in the media, that's what we're, we as a group are all being referred to. But I'm, I'm – um, who was it? I was talking to one of my professors the other day. He was explaining, like, listen, you know, I've had this job for 40 years. For most of you, that's not realistic because we're getting so hyper-specialized. You're going to have, like, seven jobs over your life, like seven major jobs. It's yeah, like, I was going to say, I've had seven jobs, good. like, already. So Yeah, well, I mean, like, you know, as, as you get older, obviously, you get into more involved positions, right? And so jumping around, you're going to be jumping around a lot more. And exactly, and like you said, you're, you're already getting a taste of that, um, which is really weird. It's, it's going to be interesting to see how the world uh, deals with this because the whole structure is going to have to change. Yeah, uh, here I'm just hoping uh, – I'm hoping this will take off and help me retire. That's – you know what? That's the plan. Uh, I'm going to – well, it's like that meme page we have on Facebook that I tried to sell for $2 million. And I $2,000. <laughs> $2,000 just to turn a quick buck. I don't know. We had like, what, like – 13 30 likes maybe on that shit it was okay so uh mitchell and i at one point uh found you uh, sorry you found it i you found, found this it. picture yeah. of this of this puffer fish it was when a textbook or something it was from a textbook i don't remember from... where i found it and so we kept it was it was this drawing of a fish and a puffer fish it was making this hilarious face like it was shocked and surprised maybe a little aroused you know what? we'll, that we'll probably put it in the thumbnail I mean, we're definitely putting it in there now. At this point. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm committing to it. It's going to be on the left. Uh, go like Shitty Fish on <laughs> Facebook. Left. Yeah, go, go like... Do you want to link Heck Media and Shitty Fish and do, like, a collab? Oh, yeah. <laughs> ourselves? Oh, yeah. Like, just take, like, clips of our, like, for, like uh, screenshots of our articles and put Shitty Fish in them. This is how we make just, it. Like, this this is how we get marketing. big. Do we just make a bunch of dumb pages and make them all, like, talk to each other? Yeah. <laughs> make just a big old fucking wank tank. A, a simulated <laughs> audience. Oh my god, can we, this is, this, wait, hang on, turn off the podcast, we, we need to talk about this. <laughs> Quit, stop the recording. We ruined our uh, secret. <laughs> oh my god, uh, speaking of secrets, uh, let's talk about our articles this week. I call them secrets because, you know, nobody reads our shit. I really, I really uh, thought you were gonna go, like, let's preview a new thing we're gonna do, but alright. <laughs> alright, no, fine, we're doing that now. Let's preview some new stuff. Or some uh, stuff coming up down the pipeline. All right, so, uh, do you want to talk a little bit about your gallery coming up? Uh, yeah. Um, we plugged it last week, I believe, the, the mm -hmm. art gallery that I want to do. Um, so it, it's pretty much the same as, as last week. Uh, if anybody's out there listening and you fancy yourself the creative type who uh, likes to make art, just uh, send us some submissions of anything you're proud of, anything you're happy with. Um, it, we're going general on this first one. We just want to see what you got. We want to see how much fun we can have with this and how much potential it has as a project to have follow-ups that maybe will have themes or uh, challenges, something to that effect. So send anything you're proud of art-wise uh, submissions to heckmedia at gmail.com. Uh, we'd love to see them. Uh, I got a couple of people in my own personal life interested already, and uh, I know for a fact that they are some of the most talented people I know. So you got some some stiff, not competition, but uh, you'll be shown along, alongside of uh, some pretty talented people, uh, one of which uh, actually is, uh, he went to school for fine arts, so he's a pretty accomplished guy. You hear that? We have real artists. Real so, artists, not real just, artists. Not just, just me. Fake artists. <laughs> not just fartists. Oh boy, oh man. I, uh, I want to get into fart so bad, which I guess with no context that sounds really weird. Uh, yeah, well, but uh, um, and it, we'll 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 save fart for next week maybe. Uh, maybe. Um, well, we gonna we gotta do our fart week, and uh, this is another thing that's gonna be secrets. We're gonna talk about it a little bit. We're not gonna describe what it is, uh, and that's that's good. So speaking of fart, <laughs> what did you write this week? You see, now that's a good segue. <laughs> Thank you. Because I, I would yesterday. I would consider my article this week fart. All right. Well, I guess now we have to define what fart is. Well, I mean, do we? No, we don't. Just read the so, article uh, and then you know. 
So once again, hit, bring us those hits, those alliterative hits, uh, which I fucking love. Every time you send me an article and it's alliterative, I just my like nineteen sixty six Batman like boner just gets a little bigger. Uh, every time you mean every time, just because it's Batman <laughs> every time. Every, literally once a week, I get so hard I can't handle it. Um, <laughs> so uh, you talked this week about uh, the title of the article: uh, "Depressing Division of Duality." Yeah, uh, I stared at a blank word document for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> um i had no idea what to write i got i'm imagining i'm imagining that you're just like sitting there on your couch got like a cold drink in your hand right you're like you're staring at your fucking computer <laughs> that's pretty accurate <laughs> that's oh that's magical uh yeah because i pa- i paused i've been watching scrubs again for probably oh the my God. 30th so time good. yeah i i, I uh it's... i think in when i was in high school i think i watched it that was one of the shows i would watch once a year but, oh uh, no! You were always watching through Scrubs. Oh yeah, always. yeah. No, I've probably watched that show like fifteen or twenty times through. Um, uh, on a related note, I've actually been uh, I've been watching through House, another medical semi drama. I don't like House. I really like House now. I didn't initially. I thought I did, I thought he was a dick, but they all they developed the characters so well in that show. But, but I'll let you go on. Oh, I don't even there. mean House as a character. I just meant the show. I'll have to give another watch. But anyway, yeah, I think you'd like it now. I think you'd like it now. Any well, uh, yeah. No, I stared at a at a blank screen for about an hour. Uh, in mostly silence, I would occasionally click into YouTube and open up a song, and then it would end, and I would just sit again for five minutes <laughs> and dead quiet. Uh, you were right on the drink. It, but it started cold. It got warm. Oh my god! You're sitting there so long. It got warm. Yeah. Well, you know, it was in my hand the whole time. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, heat transfer, that's what that was. Uh, so, eventually, I just decided, let's just get real, real mad. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do this week? Rage. I'm just going to get real upset. And, uh, well, you, and, and then, you, you uh, politics. You use a phrase in the article. Yeah. Yeah. You use a phrase in the article that I, that I love. Mm. Um, talk, talking about the thing called the theater of the absurd. Oh, it's one of my favorites. It is that is a wonderful phrase and it is unbelievably accurate. Um, do you want to give a little rundown of what you said in your article? Uh, yeah, um, there's actually a couple lines that I'm pretty proud of in my article because I like the more bombastic, uh, excessive language sometimes. Oh yeah, I mean, there's there's definitely times to be to be that kind of that kind that kind of gas bag. Well, and it's something that I find super funny, uh, but it's. I talk basically about how the world we live in is so miserable, and yet it's at these times that you would think that we would come together and be communities and friends and families and work together to solve the problems that are facing us, but <laughs> no. But, but indeed. Yeah, but. It's a, it's a big but. It's a fat <laughs> but. Uh, it's a big old hairy butt. Big old hairy fat butt. <laughs> we uh we just pick now when the world is the most rife with just bad shit to to really just pick on each other. Um, <laughs> you know the the True. Democrats just hate the Republicans and and the you know you're pro gun control. You hate everyone who's con and vice versa. And it's just every topic that deserves and would benefit from a calm, rational, nuanced conversation just gets, you know, nothing of the sort. Because right. I'm right, you're wrong, and nothing you say can make me change my opinion in even the slightest amount. And and that is one of the single most horrifying things I have ever heard and known. Um, if you're so steadfast in your beliefs, like, right, there are certain things that you believe that you're going to believe, and that's fine. But when it comes to something that is an analytical, like I'm, I'm getting, re- like, I'm, I'm taking out, like, theology, right? I'm taking out, like, religion for it. Because that's, like, a, that works on a different level. Right? Well, yeah, faith is, or, faith or is it different. Should. Faith it should. Well, faith is, by definition, an absolute belief. Right. And, and, it, which is interesting that, and, and, and horrifying that people are now bringing that into the political realm the scientific realm it's horrifying well we used to live 
it used to be right ideally this is the ideal world that never really existed but we are gonna pretend like it did <laughs> yeah um, where everyone always listened to the statistics right everyone was always looking at it and like wow look at that uh, something like look gun control this and there's like a percentage and they're like okay so let's make a decision off this so here's something that i decided to it was initially it was in my initial uh write-up of the article and i decided to take it out because it sounded a little bit holier than now because i didn't I didn't, no, I, it's not that I didn't have time or space, but I felt it would have been too wordy to explain what I meant. Um, mm-hmm. But it, it boiled down for, to... For, like, posterity's sake. Yeah, it boiled down to, um, I've had conversations with people before about things that I thought were unshakable beliefs on my, my part. Um, mm-hmm. An example would be gun control. I was pretty pro-gun control, and, and in, I still am pro-control, but there's more specific measures that I want in place now rather than just ban guns. And I had a conversation with a close friend of mine over the course of a few hours, hanging out, talking, and both of us came away a little bit of a different mindset. And that's such a Mm -hmm. treasure because it brought both of us, which were, we, we were both fairly close to the extremes it brought both of us a little closer to the middle, and the middle typically represents a more rational thought process. Right, because uh, once you fly to extremes, you're kind of being governed by a lot of emotion. You know, somebody might be pro-gun control. It was like, oh, my friend was shot and killed. You know, tragic event. However, that's, there's so much more to the situation than my friend got shot with a gun, so guns equal bad. Yeah, and, so, and it's... Goodbye, right. Yeah. And now it's... And it's the scale of it, too. It's one thing if some people are off to the extreme. We've always had people that are off to the extreme in any topic. You have they're, extreme... They're gonna be nuts. Yeah, you have, you have extremists, you know, of any religion, Catholic, Muslim. You have extremists in, you know, I'm super, you know, white supremacists or black supremacists. And then you have the people that would generally be considered the rational ones that are in the middle, where, yes, I want rights for black people but not you know they don't need to be the new master race and then vice versa like i want rights for you know my people but i don't strive to be better than right yeah it's we live in a world that is so once again so polarizing right so viciously and unbelievably just the worst version of yin and yang where they're not working in harmony but they are staunchly opposed to each other Right, and of course, then you get into like money and agendas, and you know everyone's pushing their beliefs for a reason, right? And we've gotten away from, or we never were there. Uh, we have never gotten to the point where it mattered, right? Where the real things matter because there are people involved. Uh, real things matter because you know they're going to affect us. These things like gun control laws, um, anything, Christ, any of the problems, you know, race problems border problems uh economic problems in general you know we're always gonna have people on both sides going nuts going absolutely bonkers but your article brought up such a good idea which is should be so fucking obvious but it's not uh everyone needs to calm the fuck down everyone needs to get in the middle and talk yeah where in in the past we've considered the middle the rational position to be but now you look at just for example, our candidates are, you know, quote unquote, only viable candidates for presidency. Mm-hmm. And they're both, and I think I used this wording in the article, caricatures of their parties. You have oh, the comically far right and the comically far left. Right. And, and uh, I've seen a lot of people use the, uh, the, the, the example that it seems like we're living in like some kind of terrible comic book universe, right? Where we have... Uh, on, on the right, you know, we have Donald Trump, who is, like, a cartoon... For, for a lot of people, he's, like, a cartoon, like, <laughs> the villain that, like, ties women to train tracks. Like, he has the mustache. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, like, you know the archetype, right? Well, and yeah, I, have, think, like, I think I said in the, the article also, we, yeah. we have the choice between a cartoon villain and the real-life yep. kind. Right, it's like we have... And on the other side, we have fucking literally Lex Luthor, like, <laughs> committing real crimes. It's like... Christ, like if, if this was the real option, if this was really how it was, we the human rights would have been toast long ago, right? It's just it's good that there are people who want to see it 
and learn something, right? Uh, I feel like we have a very, we've kind of unfortunately evolved into a very anti-intellectual society where it, it's much more about feelings and less about facts, right? Because well, feelings are important, yes. but facts are more important. Well, yes, and I, I think it's also because we live in a world of accessibility where mm-hmm. when you have niche opinions, you can find the people that agree with you. Oh, yeah, you can go find your circle jerk. Your circle jerk's for everybody. So it's it's it seems to me that when people say, like, I love that Donald Trump speaks his mind, it's like, man, I love that Donald Trump thinks exactly the way I do. Right, because everyone, you know, ever ever since, like, the, the I brought it up last week, the, you know, Nixon Kennedy, you know, like, I want to have a beer with him. Like, um, no. We should pick someone who's gonna do the best for our country. I don't care if they're my friend. <laughs> like, if you get like, I'm I'm more so I'm more on the side of libertarian, and so you know I favor small government. Um, I'm libertarian on almost all fronts except for like open. Borders. So you would say so you would say you largely you favor small government, but mm-hmm. social freedoms. Right. Yeah. I want the society to control the society. So you want um, you want less strict uh, drug control. Um, less strict, like say you want more uh, gay rights, LGBTQ rights, um, but you want smaller government, less federal spending. Right. I want. Is that a fair overview of the libertarian? Just for people yeah, that don't know. So. Yeah, yeah. Very libertarian is very much. I want the government out of my, I get out of my pockets and get out of my life. I want you there to keep us safe from invasions. Uh, but for the most part, laissez-faire in economy, laissez-faire in society, and all, as a whole, right? They should be more of an armor than a sword and shield, if you get what I'm saying. I don't want them to play as much of an active role, but I want them there. Because it's necessary. At this point in the world... Well, yeah, federal government has always been necessary. I mean, right. if, if you look at... the you need representation. If you look at the fall of old empires, it's always because they couldn't reach their federal government to the far reaches of their empires. Exactly, right. Like, they were too focused inside, and they couldn't spread out, and then, of course, they got weak on their borders, blah, blah, blah. Um, but, yeah, it's just, it's insane to me that it, the whole, the whole, I mean, you, I think you summed it up perfectly, the depressing division. Yeah, because um, when, you know, like I've said before, you and I are fairly um, different in our thought processes, and our beliefs, uh, but we can sit here and have a rational conversation and both come away from it thinking, all right, I learned a little something, and I feel like I'm more educated and more rational in my decision-making. Exactly. Like, I mean, we had a conversation, you and I had a conversation about uh, everything, you know, uh, we, we can talk about it, right? Exactly. And we're different. We're different people. You know, we believe different things, and that's good. That is a good thing. <laughs> that's humanity as a whole. That's what it is. Right, it's representative of the group, and the, and that's what our government should be, but it's not, and that needs to change. So speaking speaking of being being a little different, having different opinions, I'd like to uh, I'd like to move on to my article this week. That apparently you have a sweet sweet zinger for me. Oh yeah, no, I I read it and I <laughs> loved it and I shared it uh, on Facebook and I said that uh, I said what I thought on Facebook. Like I don't agree with everything in it. Um, but I, I, you know, I agree with some of it and not with others. But I also think it's real funny how uh, <laughs> in last week's podcast, if anybody listened, we we made we made the jokes of <laughs> being overly high minded and overly pretentious for really not having any station yet. Uh, and his whole article, you know, not the whole thing, but the, the brief summary of his article was: the, the you got the, you gotta the, earn your spot, kid. Not everybody's special. You gotta earn it. And I just thought it was real funny because because we had said earlier in the week, in that same week earlier, we had said like, wow, look how overly pretentious and full of ourselves we are. And then he goes and writes that. Oh, yeah. And and, and I think to a large point, when I, when I was writing it, I, I knew. I'm like, ah, Christ, here we go. <laughs> Like, I know I'm going to get flack, right? And because I mean, you, you love ripping on me and I, we rip on each other. And I think it's a good, that's a good basis for any relationship. Like if you can't rip on each other, then like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, man, that's, that's the friendship. That's what it is, man. And so uh, my, my article this week uh, titled works versus words in a modern society. Um, it kind of touches on the, uh, the whole give everyone a trophy culture of the late nineties, mid nineties, early two thousands that we grew up with and how it's affecting society now. 
uh, the gist of it, yeah, essentially was, you know, you are special as a person, right? But it doesn't stop there. That's not enough. You need to do something. You have to contribute to the world around you in order to be important. Nobody is inherently important, uh, in my opinion. And I, I mean, I think I'm right. Uh, you know, you should always be doing something. Like, do something. But I get that sometimes you'll go through fits of like you're having a bad day, or if you're legitimately, uh, you know, diagnosed with some some form of something that stops you. Well, I mean, also sure, small small stuff. sample sizes are, are different. Having a day what? where you do nothing doesn't mean you're not doing anything. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying like you always be doing something. Like, no, like, but I've always, as a person, I've always had. I've been a project person. I mean, you know, I mean, I've been. I always have projects going. Yeah, for I'm sure. I mean, this, uh, that, you know, and... give a little inside baseball. Heck, media was pretty much all you. You just needed somebody to help you produce it and get it off the ground. Exactly. And, you know, I'm, I'm super glad to have you, of course, you know. Well, I mean, um, I hope so. I hope you wouldn't, uh, I hope <laughs> no, I'm not I mean, your, like, that, fifth I mean, choice and off. everyone else told you to fuck off. <laughs> That's what it was. I, uh, I workshop this to everyone. Even my parents told me to fuck off. Um, I but... would believe that. <laughs> no, they would. They definitely would. They'd be like, get a real job, hippie. And so, actually, it was funny, little, little anecdote. I was, I was, I, I called my mom one day. I'm like, hey. This is a thing I'm doing. And she she didn't quite get it. You know, they're kind of Luddite even for I, my dad less so, but my mom for sure. Uh, yeah, you know man. I, mean? I tried to tell my dad about it today, and he just had no <laughs> idea. Right. Like, you explain it, and like it makes sense to us because we grew up in this internet uh, media revolution. All we and do is them, consume like, media. You're like, what the hell? Like, you're just writing and talking? Like, oh, no, that's not what I meant. And so she called. She's like, so you're basically like an internet hippie. You know what? Yeah. <laughs> like, I fucking guess so. <laughs> like, what did you say? Like, all right, fine, mom. That's, yeah, I'm a, like, you know, you at least, like, concede at some point. Like, yeah, that's, I'm an internet hippie. That's, yep, yeah, that's what I do. That's my thing now. <laughs> it's like, um, but yeah, and so, I, I really, I, you know, a, as someone who's still in the, in the college system, um, I, I see it a lot. A lot of kids who will say that they're really good this or really good that, and they can't point at anything to prove it, um, I've had a couple people who wanted to write for us, and uh, they're like, oh, I'm really, really good. I'm really, really I'm like, all right, show me what you're writing. I want to see it. Well, I don't, uh, you know, I, I'm like, okay, are you going to do it? And these are people I never hear back from. Right? See, the trick is to under-promise on everything and then right. over-deliver. Oh, That's the thing. You got to, like, be like, I don't know if this is good, and then, but in your head you're thinking that it's dope. Yeah, well, because well, cause even, even now, when I have, you know, not a lot of people, but a few people that I don't talk to very often coming up to me and saying, like, hey, you know, you're doing pretty well with that writing thing. I didn't know you could do this and that. I still won't say I'm good at it. Oh, right. Yeah, you got to be like, oh, you know, I, I, I like doing it. And it's, you know, uh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm a big cocky dick. So I'm like, <laughs> let me, you don't think that's good. And I like, link oh, I just don't think I'm good. And I think that's the thing. I, it's confidence that gets built over time, right? Because no one likes the first twenty things they make, because you're like, damn it. Oh yeah, no, I can I can recall being in high school and the first mm-hmm. you know couple years of college that I did, and thinking like, yeah, I'm pretty good at this or that, and then I you know get out of it for four or five years, and I'm well, you yeah. know don't have that confidence anymore. So I'm sure it'll come back, but it's it's a matter of you have to put yourself out there with out thinking you're good to really know if right. you are right you got to go in i mean i you got to go in humble right go in knowing that you're going to make mistakes that you're gonna it's not gonna be as good as it's going as it's going to be but also in that recognizing that it is going to get better that you're going to make better shit you're gonna make stuff that you that you a year ago you wouldn't even have imagined uh, i remember you uh, one of my favorite things about this whole hack media thing is you texted me one day and what was the word you used Oh my god, it was in... Oh, Braggadocio. The... Braggadocio! You texted me like, yo, I just, just dropped this huge word, right? Like, I dropped this, like, really powerful, poignant, good word. And you're like, I just dropped it. Like, it just came to me. And I'm like, there it is. There's... That's what... That's heck media right there. That, like... Oh my god, look what I just did. Yeah, that, that, like, that, you know, that feel good. And it's, uh, it's, it's been interesting since... I think I've written, what, four things now for the site? Uh, yes. So, the first two weeks were much more structured in my mind. They were things that I had known I was going to write about for a long time and had been workshopping. 
And then the second two have been more off the cuff, things that I've worked on and it, you know, it only took me, you know, the day to write it and then the day to edit it and then send it out. Mm -hmm. Um, But they're much more, I feel much more confident and the last two have been much more emotional and I feel like they've been better for it. So it's like, it's, it's even that quickly you build the confidence. Right, because you're letting yourself become part of the piece. Um, I, I've always, I've always said that uh, if you write a good piece, you leave a piece of yourself within the piece, right, within the work. You leave a a mark, an undefinable, undeniable mark. Of like this is mine. You like, stamp it. Um, and and then as as you do more, and, and as a lot of people are listening, listen. If you're doing something creative, right? If you're writing music, if you're doing whatever you're doing, painting, drawing. Whatever you want to do that's creative, don't stop. Quitting is the worst thing you can do. Uh, I've had a lot of little projects where I'll get like, you know, I'll get like a, a week or two into them and, you know, uh, uh, life gets in the way, right? You know, you got to carve out time for it. Uh, it, it I mean, it, I mean, you know, you come back from work, you know, you work pretty late, you know, and so you come in, you're like, I'm pretty tired. I want to just kind of sit down with a bev, have a good time. I got a thing I got to write. You know, and it sucks. You know, having a deadline kind of sucks, but at the same time, forcing yourself to write uh, or do whatever you're doing, you know, I mean, obviously don't make yourself hate it. Well, no, but having, having this, having this deadline to kind of lean on or like press up against, it makes me keep to it because I'm not somebody that follows through with a lot of things, but having somebody to answer to and somebody that's depending on me to give them something to put on the site, you know, you, Mm -hmm. um, it's... It helps because, <laughs> that I am. but it, it, it makes me more apt to just put something out there. And even like the last, like last week or this week, the, the piece on division was, like I said, I stared at an empty screen for an hour and it was like, I don't know, I have no idea. And then eventually it just, something clicked and I felt it and I did it and it was good. It was great. People like it and I like it. I was happy with it. And I'm happy mm-hmm. I did it, but it was it was hard to do. Oh yeah, it, and that's the thing. It, I think people often get turned away by the difficulty of things, and and rightfully so. You know, like how much time do you have to give to something? How much time are you willing to give to it, even if you have the time? Um, you, you got it, and you did, and you did the the smart thing. You internalized it. You're like, okay, this to me, this is important to me because I need to do this because you always got to give yourself an answer. Um, cause if you're doing something and you can't answer, you can't ask yourself why I'm doing it and get a good answer, stop. Yeah. Right. I, th- I think it's also about knowing yourself. Some people are really good at, at self-motivating and creating their own deadlines. Some people aren't. Uh, I like having somebody that I need to answer to, whether it be a superior or an equal or whatever, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter. But as long as there's Just somebody, yeah, as long as there's somebody that's expecting me to do something, I'll get it done. And that's good for me. Creatively, you know, professionally, it doesn't matter. As long as that person expects me to do X, Y, and Z, it'll all get done. Oh, absolutely. And I'm very much, I'm very much the self-starter type. I'm very good at getting myself motivated. You know, I, I, like, I internalize it, I make it a deal, and I, I do it. And that works for me. And I know that doesn't, like, like for you, my, my, my techniques will not work for you, and your techniques will not work for me. No, um, because, that, you know, and, that's, uh... People aren't alike. People just, Mm -hmm. people think differently. There's many different mindsets. And that's part of, you know, I think that's actually part of both of our articles this week is you have to embrace it, but acknowledge it. Yeah, it it, it is a a maybe necessary evil, you know, um, but that doesn't mean it has to stay that way. Um, You know, you got to look at what you're doing and see. You got to really, people, it's all about introspection. Right, it's all about, like you said, knowing yourself and knowing yourself well enough to know when you can critique yourself, or know when you need to motivate, or know how to motivate. Because, um, I, like you said, there's been a lot, lot of brilliant people that I've known who do things and then just stop. And I'm like, no, don't stop. Like there was, um, I can't remember his name. Uh, it was a while ago. It was an old back. Oh my god, this must have been in like 2008, 2009. Um, there was an artist on Newgrounds. Uh, who was awesome. He did these really awesome uh, stop motion stuff. I love stop motion, specifically claymation. I love I love the whole art. Um, 
and he was doing it. And then one day he's like, he just stopped. Right. And I got in contact with him a couple of years ago. I'm like, Oh, whatever happened? He's like, I just lost, I just, I, didn't, I just lost motivation. It's like, I wanted to do it, but I couldn't figure it. I couldn't find it. You know, it's like, ah, shit. If you knew yourself a little better, maybe you could have, you know, yeah, maybe you could have done something more, but you know, it's kind of how it is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, intr- introspection is, it, it's hard to do. It's something you really have to strive towards. But it's something that'll make everything you do from then on better. Absolutely. Um, I mean, we're coming up in the hour. Yeah, I was actually thinking, speaking of There's introspection, we should, know, uh, we should know ourselves well enough to know that <laughs> this is probably we just... where we've worn out our welcome. Yeah, we will just go on forever. I, if I never, if I had to not, if I, if I could just not breathe, I would just talk forever. Yeah, yeah, I would uh, I would fill the ear of the populace with my bullshit until the end of time. <laughs> I think, um, is there anything else you want to bring up? Uh, um, here, let me just, uh, let me, let me give, uh, give me, let me give a brief tease to a thing that might happen this Ooh. week, maybe next week. Uh, oh, yeah. we want to start doing something called, uh, perf- what was it, Performer Profiles? Performer pro- yeah, Performer Profiles. That's, uh, that's a rough name we want to give it. it. Uh, but basically, mm-hmm. it's something to try to bring Subject audio to into Heck Media. Uh, we want to start bringing on uh, singers, songwriters, uh, performers of any kind uh, to... We want to do like an uh, interview piece and then maybe bring them on the podcast if they're interested in talking to the people. Um, but it's, it's going to be fun. Uh, we should be starting out this week or next uh, with a mutual friend of ours who has mm-hmm. already expressed interest and... Uh, I think it'll be fun. Just look forward to it. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. This is what I like. We're finally getting into right because we got a little startup time where we had to kind of establish like, hey, look, we're doing weekly stuff. Here's our stuff. But now we get to do what we really set out to do in the first place, which is branch out and really give people that stage. And we're finally doing it. Oh, I'm so hyped. Yeah, we so finally hyped. we finally get to uh, finally get to pimp out other people's work, which is really what we wanted to do in the first place. Yeah. Uh, and so I think at that point, I think, I think we're good. I think we're good to go. Yeah, I think we can call it. All right. So, uh, I'm Brendan. And I'm Mitchell. And thanks you guys, uh, so much for listening to the second episode of the Vestibule of Heck. Thanks guys. I'll good to see you. I'll catch you next week. Bye. Bye.